If you've been following the Verge channel for a while, you'll know exactly where I am right now. And so in this video today, I'm gonna to talk about three mistakes that I made over the last 10 years on this property and how it really turned out okay. But you'll likely be able to learn from these mistakes yourself so you don't make the same ones. One of the first mistakes that I made was planting this food forest out with too much density. Now it's since been corrected with the new owners of the food forest, but I basically put too many plants into too small of a space because I was getting a bit greedy. I wanted to get lots of food out of here. And as a result of that, we ended up having less production until we took some of the plants out. And so in a food forest, we want about 50% of the food forest in the canopy layer. So that's trees like apple trees and sea buckthorn. And then we want to fill the gaps in with shrubs like this currant or the honeyberry. We want herbs like the strawberry and the angelica over here. And you'll notice that even in the apple tree right now, there's even hops growing in there. So we even have a vine layer. And so everything's kind of chunky and equally kind of proportioned so that all the bushes get enormous amounts of sun, which is really where your productivity comes from. In spite of getting some of the food forest planted wrong, the apples here are still absolutely amazing. It's a hearty mac. The second mistake that I made is I planted these cherries too close to the sidewalk. So when you're planting your food forest, make sure you really take into account how big these plants are going to get. Now, in order to keep these plants manageable, the homeowner is going to have to come in here and prune them on a regular basis because as you can see, it's really encroaching in on the sidewalk. Now, it's kind of a happy little accident because as people are walking by here and these trees are dripping with fruit, they can't help but pick them and consume them, which was the original intent of this cherry hedge. I'm standing inside of our first passive solar greenhouse. And in spite of the mistakes that I made when I was designing this greenhouse, it still is an exceptionally productive space. Passive solar greenhouses provide climates like Calgary, which only gets 100 frost-free days, with the ability to grow two, three, and even four seasons of the year, providing all sorts of abundance to the people living inside. It's amazing how many lessons I learned in this greenhouse and how many of the ideas that I developed right here are now going into our new greenhouses that are being pushed out right through Western Canada. The last mistake that I wanted to talk about was the fact that we use these raised wicking beds inside the greenhouse. Now we didn't have a lot of option to use these because this greenhouse is built on top of a concrete footing, but I don't like growing in raised beds that are disconnected from the subsoils because subsoils are where all the minerals and nutrients come from that we gain access to when we have good fungally dominant soils. And so while these beds work quite well, as you can see, there's a lot of productivity in here, it's even better when we can design a greenhouse that's built into the ground so the plants have access to the subsoils. So if you're building a greenhouse, plan to make sure that your plants will have access to the ground below the greenhouse, not just in raised beds like this. While design is unique to you and your goals, the framework that you approach these designs are important. I spent years learning and improving practices and what took me 10 years to implement, I could create in a couple of months now. Permaculture is so inspiring as even with a couple of mistakes and some systems that can be further optimized, you can still create a property that functions well to allow yourself to collaborate with nature. One of the strengths that I had in the beginning was a systematic approach to permaculture and a network of other permaculture experts that were coming up and learning at the same time. Nowadays, there's more information than ever and it's so accessible. However, permaculture can be a paralyzing patchwork of information. So it can be hard to understand how and what to apply on your property. That's why we created the Verge Live online PDC course to provide you with the practical, systematic approach to understanding and absorbing the information in a clear and structured way. We've also curated a diverse set of renowned expert instructors to immerse you in all aspects of permaculture. And this is such an advantage because permaculture has only been around for 45 years. However, our instructors represent close to 400 years of experience within their disciplines. We created this to be your first foundational step into a life as a permaculturist. Mistakes are often the best teacher. They can teach you more about your land and the ecosystems than any video could. However, approaching your property with powerful tools and frameworks for land regeneration, trying things out and then understanding why something did or didn't work is super valuable. Let my mistakes be your teacher and let our course give you the structure and support you need to make sense of everything permaculture. If this sounds interesting, check out the Verge online permaculture design course this fall and I'll leave all the details in the show notes down below.